Controversial opinion. Being a YouTuber is hard work. Between working my full-time job, editing videos, scheduling all the people, writing the scripts, I barely have enough time to watch the YouTube videos that I enjoy. If only there was some way I could get someone to do it for me. So this video is going to be a little different to what I usually do. If you haven't already heard about this AI boom that's taking over the internet, there's these new up and coming, well not so new programs called OpenGPD and Pictionary, which pretty much allow the users to enter prompts and will automatically create videos, scripts, uh, logs, chats. Do you like chocolate? Yeah. Am I talking to a ghost? Yeah. And while it's super exciting to see all of this cool AI technology come, it is a little scary to know that every day we are edging closer and closer to that opening scene in Terminator 2. But that's all right, because today we're not using this AI to take over the world. Today, I will be using this AI to rank one of my favorite YouTubers, who you may ask, How's it going, boys? My name is Schlatt, and welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an unprecedented time. You ever written about the Ma situation, though? The Ma? My What's the balls. Ma situation? <laughs> Why did I choose Jay Slat, you may ask? Well, it's because in a recent stream he did on Twitch, he had this to say. When you realize you use ChatGPT to auto-generate a script on any top on any topic for YouTube, then use Pictory to generate a video that goes with the script. What are you talking about? Do you genuinely believe that you can just have robots do all of it and make thousands and thousands of, of dollars? You might as well start start drop shipping if you really think you could do that. Prove me wrong. Seriously, by all means, prove me the fuck wrong. And that's exactly what I plan to do. Accepting his challenge, I devised a plan to create a series of videos solely using AI. To answer the question, can these programs really replace content creators? That's what I want to find out today. So for using the AI, I'm going to get it to review every single one of JSLAT's main channel videos and then compare it to how I would rate those videos to see how they compare. <laughs> and if you're wondering why I made the AI do a tier ranking video, it's, uh, well, because Today's the day I'm gonna rank every single cookie, chip cereal known to man. And make no mistake, this will upset you. One second. You know, it just seemed fitting. So straight off the bat, I had some issues with getting the AI to review all of Schlatt's videos all at once. Here's a list of Schlatt's main channel videos ranked by popularity. The day Minecraft died, the worst game I've ever million played, views. Five point but we're million playing all terrible Minecraft, Minecraft starter guides, I tried to speedrun Minecraft So first of all, none of those videos exist. I wasn't going to give up that easily. So after trying several prompts, I eventually ended on this. Write a report and review on the YouTuber Schlatt's video, a video title, as he, in summary of the video. Write it as a school report and give him a single grade from A to F. Make sure to include both positives and negatives. And keep it short. So the main issue that I had with working with the AI was that it would never reward him with an S ranking, only A to F, which is fine. We'll just say that anything that is an A plus ranking, we'll just give it a S tier from there. Now I know what you're thinking. Jay Slat's been an internet personality for a long time now. He must have hundreds of videos to review. Not if we're talking about his main channel. He currently only has 42 videos public. And 42 videos might still seem like a lot, but they get a lot easier to review when I break them down into what I like to call the errors of Slat. Don't worry, they'll make sense soon. So grab a drink, sit down, and let's dive into a little history of Jay Slat. Okay, picture this. It's 2016, the rock is everywhere, even introing, for some reason, the bloody YouTube rewind. Brexit is happening, and Donald Trump has just been voted in as the 45th president of the United States. It's a chaotic year, but in the midst of all this stuff going on, there's a little 16-year-old boy about to bless us with a little video. Mamma mia! 
Bahia. Literally every single one of my senses is under attack from this video all at once, and I am personally offended by it. But let's see what the AI thinks. In his video MLG Kart, Chilat creates an over-the-top and highly edited video of him playing the classic game Mario Kart. The video is full of flashy effects and rapid-fire edits, reminiscent of the popular MLG-style edits seen in Call of Duty videos. Chilat's video is a hilarious and highly entertaining take on the classic game, showcasing his editing skills and humor. While the video may not appeal to all viewers, it is sure to appeal to fans of the MLG style edits seen in Call of Duty videos. For this video, we give it a ranking of A. <sighs> Sometimes I miss the MLG phase that we all went through, but man, Modern Warfare 2 came out in 2009. <laughs> This was an old joke when these videos came out. So for that reason, I'm rating them E. Not F, because the editing is absolutely impressive and I bloody hell, I love Slat's video, uh, video intro. But yeah, damn, these videos aren't good. Except, except I will make an exception for the how to make an MLG banner video, because that one is actually comedy gold and it's an A tier all the way. What do I think? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Uh, no. Now on to 2017. Gone are the days of MLG edits and fast paced blah 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 for what I'd like to call Slat's thinking era. During this time he released a ton of video essays about stuff that he was very clearly passionate about. And today we're making reusable rockets that literally land themselves. The rate at which we're expanding, progressing, technology wise is mind numbing. From here, it's only gonna get better. Right? Mmm. Listen to that voice. This is the first time that we actually hear Jay Slat speak. And why this boy never went into ASMR, I will never know. Hello, everybody. My name is GB. <laughs> Regardless, let's see what the AI thought. Jay Schlatt starts his video by explaining what Black Mirror is and how it has gained popularity over the years. He then goes on to analyze various episodes of the show and how they showcase the potential dangers of technology. Jay Schlatt also provides his own commentary on the themes presented in the show, offering his own perspective on how the use of technology can negatively impact society. Throughout the video, Jay Schlatt remains serious and focused, which is a departure from his usual comedic style. He does not crack any jokes or make any attempts to lighten the mood. Instead, he stays on topic and provides insightful commentary on the show. While his delivery can be a bit dry at times, his insights are valuable and thought-provoking. Therefore, I would award him a B for this video. I absolutely love these videos because it shows a completely different side of Slat that you don't get to see anymore. This is the guy who would sit here and analyze an episode of Black Mirror versus friending a Glock at the screen at literally any point. Does Jay Schlatt have a gun? Wouldn't you like to know? Even though I think the AI did a much better job at ranking these videos in comparison to the last, ranking the Garfield video anything less than an A is pure heresy! Before we go into this next section, I need to admit something. I have never listened to Radiohead. Are you seeing boo or boons? I know, I know. It's just never really piqued my interest. But this era is where Slat starts to create video essays breaking down Radiohead's album OK Computer. In Airbag, Tom presents that feeling as a rebirth. In this devastating car crash, he's born again. In an interstellar burst of the cosmos, he's reincarnated. And in the literal burst of an airbag, he's given a second chance. Going into it, I really had no interest. So I might be a bit biased. But you know who isn't biased? The AI. Jay Schlatt begins the video by discussing how the song Airbag came to be and how it reflects the lead singer Tom York's experiences with technology. He provides a detailed analysis of the lyrics and how they relate to York's feelings of anxiety and disconnection in the modern world. Jay Schlatt also discusses the instrumentation of the song, explaining how the use of synthesizers and other electronic instruments contributes to the overall theme of the song. 
Throughout this video, he doesn't use any humor or engage in any banter, which may make the video less enjoyable for some viewers. Additionally, his delivery is somewhat monotone, which may make it difficult for viewers to stay engaged throughout the entire video. For this reason, we are giving this video a C ranking. Looks like the AI didn't really get the radio head craze either. Whoopsie. But that being said, watching these videos, it's really hard not to be pulled in. It's so obvious that Joe Slate cares so much about these videos and Radiohead as a whole. And for that reason, even just a video production alone, I'm gonna raise it up a little higher than the AI did because I'm a sucker for passion. Let me tell you something, you little COVID 2020 babies. Long before he was getting cancelled on Twitter, before he was opening a legal coffee shop in Minecraft, before he was... I had a third example. But long before that, he was a businessman, all about making that bread in a little game called OpenTTD. If you want to go about building your own railroad, you don't have to spend $50 million. You don't have to have all your slaves killed by Indians. What are you, what are you doing? Just go down to OpenTTD.org and download the free game. It's about moving things and making money. My man was a money-making machine. He was like a young Elon Musk, just without the shitty haircut. <laughs> Unless... Wait a minute. What is under that hat slap? Ah! In his video, Open TTD, a transportation nightmare, Schlatt starts the video by explaining the rules of the game and how the competition works. He then proceeds to play the game, building train and bus lines to transport passengers and goods throughout the town. As the game progresses, Schlatt's competitive side comes out, and he goes to great lengths to outdo his opponents including buying out their companies and causing traffic jams to sabotage their progress. One potential negative of the video is that some viewers may find Schlatt's competitive nature to be off-putting. He goes to great lengths to win the game, including sabotaging his opponents and monopolizing the market at any cost. Some viewers may find this behavior to be unsportsmanlike and unappealing. For this reason, I have to rank this video with a C+. We're just going to brush past the imagery that the AI chooses to use because honestly, I don't I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I'm just going to we're just going to put it in a little box. We're just going to put it over here cuz I, I don't know. One thing I would like to point out about the AI's review is this is what they meant by sabotaging. Unfortunately, it looks like Fleffing Bridge Transport 1 has also set up a bus route in Fleffing Bridge, which means I'm going to bomb half of the town and create a blockade for their bus. That's better. This era of Slats is kind of odd to me because while a lot of people would have found him through his controversies, his streams, or his TikToks or whatever, this is actually the first video I ever saw of Slats, and I loved it. I loved it so much that I shared it around with all my friends, even showing them when they'd come over to the house. It was just Open TD, T, 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 D, T. Open TTD was just one of my favorite series on YouTube. And while the other videos in the gaming era, like the Comedy Night and your Sub Roses, aren't as good, they always still make me smile because they remind me of the stupid videos that I was making with my friends at the same time. This is actually not that hard if you like play that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I adore this era of GA Slat. Not just because we're getting closer to the modern slat that we all know and love, but because it seems like a combination of everything that's come before. Nintendo did a really good job making a game franchise that was fun for everyone. And it's... His video editing, his voiceovers, and even his sense of humor, all just like culminating in these incredible love letters to, once again, something that he was clearly passionate about. Gillette's a tribute to Mario Kart is a beautifully crafted, nostalgic journey back in time to when life was simple and all you needed was a controller and some friends to have a good time. Gillette's personal anecdotes bring a touch of heart and soul to the video making it more than just a tribute to a game, 
but a tribute to the memories we all share. While the humor may not appeal to everyone and the video could have been longer, Schlatt's delivery and timing are strong. Overall, I would give this video a grade of A plus for the warm and fuzzy feelings it brings back. You know what? I think the AI hit the nail on the head for this one. There's a reason that these are the most viewed videos on J Slide's channel and one of the big reasons that he got as popular as he did. He knows exactly how to pull on your heartstrings by connecting back to how he felt. And it's just amazing how far he's come. Though I did like the part in the Minecraft video where he said he prefers the less screamy content creators because that's the kind of YouTube he prefers, which I just think is ironic as fuck. My introduction to the genre was, well, loud. Even back then it was a screaming contest. And even though I was 12, that kind of stuff just didn't sit well with me. I just saw a fight in the chipmunks too. I just saw every... I gotta get a closer look at this fucking thing. I will now unveil to you my cock and ball pork once again, I absolutely love this era because you can just tell how passionate he is about this and it really connects with me because I kind of live through the same kind of stuff. Now to talk about the thing that I have been avoiding, the meme. While some of these memes are actually incredible, there wasn't really like an era that they all fit into, so I figured it would probably be best just to rank them in their own little section, because it's clear to me that Jay Slat was just uploading them as he thought of them, which is great because he obviously thought that they were funny enough to work on and upload, and you can tell just how much effort he put into some of these videos. Jay Slat's video, Elon Are You Okay, is a hilarious take on the many crazy things that billionaire Elon Musk has done throughout his career. From launching a car into space to smoking weed on a podcast, Jay Schlatt manages to find humor in all of the madness. The only negative about this video is that it's not long enough. Jay Slat's humor and commentary make it a delight to watch, and I could have listened to him talk about Elon Musk's antics for hours. I would give this video an A for making a hilarious video out of Elon Musk's crazy antics. As a side note, the Are You OK Elon video is over five years old. Let that sink in. If only there was some way that we could have worked out that he wasn't the genius that he led us to believe before taking over Twitter. I don't know, I don't know. And yeah, all of these videos are great. Some of them definitely better than others. But with them all wrapped up, that leads us into our final video. Now, I'm not gonna get the AI to rank this one. I don't, I don't think it's gonna see what I see. Because to me, this isn't just a video of a lizard eating in a kitchen. <laughs> it's a video showing that at one point, Jay Slat just uploaded whatever he thought was cool. He was just a kid making videos, and over time, as he stuck with it, he just got better and better. He just kept putting work into what he was passionate about, and it paid off. And that kind of makes me look at myself and go, what the hell happened to me? We kind of both started in the same spot. I've been making videos for longer than I can even remember. But somehow I just drifted away, focusing more on a nine to five job of making other people's content and instead of following my passion. And I know it's like not a perfect job. There's a fine line we all walk with YouTube, which is uh, between making the stuff you want to make and pleasing the algorithm, doing the shit that'll get you views that you know will do well. But I'm happy for him, you know? It's, uh, he took a risk and he put his personality out there and people loved it. And I think that's the thing that AI can't replace is the personality. That's a connection that just can't be faked. Unless it could be. What if I was to tell you that every single line 
of this video had been written by the AI. Would you believe me? Sure, it required a little bit of tweaking here and there, but every line, structure, emotional cue, even twist, made by a few little prompts. How much of this was me? How much of the script has been written by the AI? Do you know? How could you know? Every time you watch this video slap, I want you to think, what if?